All right, today on the Mr. Sexy Show, that's me, Mr. Sexy, we are working with the Epox Badger 40 Cal. Badger 40 Cal. Um, this is a pretty remarkable uh, air rifle. Uh, I'm getting a real kick out of it. Um, as, like a lot of you've seen, uh, air rifles out there. This one has just got the single cocking handle. So it cocks just once. There's not two settings, just one. Just cocks, you drop your slug in, push it, lock down. So it loads and cocks the hammer at the same time. Uh, so that's what it does. Um, I've ran a bunch of numbers with this like I always do, working on the Starting on the low PSI, working my way up to try to get a bell curve. Um, and we, yes, look who's here. It's our technical assistant, Mr. Mickey. So, we again, which I said, we started on, did my PSI string so I could find where the bell curve was. I'll show you that on my chart because I love charts. We also shot some ballistic gel. Um, I shot three different slugs. You see how these things mushroom. Fantastic gun. Fantastic. Uh, this thing is topping out somewhere around, for me anyways, around 330, 340 foot-pounds on the high side. We've shot slugs, five different slugs, see, five, the 155, 160, 185, the 220, and the 255. Okay, so we shot from high to low, or from low to high. Uh, this really fits the bill. Whether you're shooting the one like the 155s out for coyotes or whatnot, or the heavier slugs for a deer or a hog, uh, you know, 300 plus foot pounds is more than enough, you know, to pretty much drop any of that. So uh, let's look at some other numbers. We'll look at some other things, and we'll put all this together. What are you crying about? Stop crying. We're trying to work here. We're trying to show everybody what's going on in the air gun world, and you sit around and cry like a mama's girl. Or boy. Meow. Cry baby. Okay, let's get back here to the badger. Alright. So, one of the standout things that I like is this has the Picatinny rail top on it. So, you're not limited to uh, just certain positions to put your scope. So, if you want a long one or a short one, You've got plenty of room to work with. Uh, nice big cocking knob. Uh, it has, uh, as a trigger assembly, I believe those are uh, like the QB78 trigger setups. Um, very easy to adjust. Uh, they got videos on YouTube about those. Uh, it's got the Cerakote on it. Now, I had this one cut short, uh, so I got a 27 inch barrel on here and had it customized a little bit because um, I know everyone knows that I'm, I'm into long guns, but I'd like something short that I'm not banging the ceiling in my blind with. Um, I've got another stock coming in. Uh, it comes with the little standard like QB78 stock, uh, which is tight and light, uh, but I've got uh, a big beefy one from Richard's Microfit that I'm working on, and uh, I got my stock maker, David Lloyd Lee, is going to customize it for me. Um, and you're an asthmatic like I am, I don't like dealing with sawdust. Um, so that is the gun so far. Uh, standard fill nipple and uh, I've got a just a little Simmons scope on here nothing special I'll just take them from one gun to the other of course you know the back of the pad it's got a nice shoulder stock on it okay everyone out there in TV land we have the chart, and you know I love my chart. 
Okay, again, we're working with the good old Epox Badger 40. All right, we started with 3,000 psi, worked our way down to 4,500 to get the bell curve. Okay, now I know I'm not good enough on my handwriting to be a second grade teacher, but I did my best. So we started with a 155, 160, 185, 220, and 255. All right, and the numbers, of course. Lower, they get higher, they get higher, and then it's, you know, and then all of a sudden they start getting lower again, hence your bell curve. My particular findings, and I think everyone will agree that everybody's gauge reads slightly different, okay? So the gauge on my tanks that I'm working with, my sweet spot was between 3,600 to 4,000, okay? It's only 400 PSI different. Uh, the two bests are the 4,000 and 3,800. The 3,600 also, I see marked here, you know, is a possibility. Um, so you can see with the 155, we're getting, you know, 917, 905 with the 160, 185, 220s, 255. I like these because these give me my biggest numbers with the heavy slugs. Um, bit of oddball is the pressure gets lighter you know of course they're changing slightly um, the 155 was a screamer um, I have to see how that works out on long distance but the 155 was nice the 185 if you're looking for a medium sized slug I mean all of these will kill a deer or a pig you hit them in a bread basket but I personally like bigger slugs so I'm always tending towards the work you know, the 185 to 255 versus the 155 towards the 185. Everybody's got a different, you know, what they like and what they don't like. So for me, these are my three top numbers, okay, with your speeds. And of course, you want to know what that's working out to foot pounds of energy. So we'll go to the foot pounds of energy page, which I worked up over here. All right, so your foot pounds of energy. So, using the 3,800 PSI and the 4,000 PSI, the 155 was almost 300 foot-pounds, okay, 3,800. At 4,000, it was 338. I mean, that's pretty good, 338 foot-pounds for 155-grain slug. The 160, 185, the 220, and then the 255. And you see the 255, we're pushing 338 foot-pounds for 3,800 PSI, 334 for 4,000 PSI. So really, if you want to get, you know, three good shots out of this, like most big bores, you're going to fill up to these higher pressures, and you're going to wind up, you know, your first shot, of course, being your most popular or potent. Shot string. You know, the guys, oh, well, how, what do you fill it to? What do you get? Well, I filled the tanks up, left the hose attached, but I closed the tank so I could read the gauge as it dropped. So starting with 4,000 PSI, and you've got to excuse my little things, but he, my handwriting was a little bit off, so I had to tape these over so they look more legible. So 4,000 PSI at a 155 grain, 925 for a shot, dropped six, or 600, P, 600 PSI per shot, 3,400 second shot, 888, 2,800 on the last one, 800. I mean, that's not shabby. The 185, a little bit heavier. You can see the shots, 890, 846, 795, still pretty decent. At the heavier bullets, that's where we start to see our drop. First two shots are pretty good. The third shot, you know, is pretty on the low side. So the 220, 817, 790, and 722. See, it's dropping pretty good. And then the 255, 755, 741, 653. Now, some of these are going to be a little bit off compared to the previous chart that I showed you. Like I said, you know, getting that gauge just to drop on. Some of my tanks, I've got 10,000 PSI gauges, so every increment's 200 PSI. Others are 6,000, every increment's, you know, 100 PSI. So it's a little awkward sometimes trying to read if I have my glasses on or the, you know it's, it's just 
I'm getting as close as I can with my limited vision. I'm old. Okay? So that gives us a rundown on just the number testing. Okay? I started this at 8 a.m. Okay? And it's now 12.30. So I spent some time running these numbers. It's not just something you can just whip out really quick. But hopefully from the work I've done with these numbers, when you get one of these guns in your hands, you have a pretty good starting point so you don't have to shoot through bags and bags of bullets like I do. Okay, so I'm really hoping that helps out. Alright, so that's our numbers. Let's look at some ballistic gel and some other things. I know you guys seen me before, you know, with the ballistic gel, you know, and I, a lot of people send me emails and letters going, Roy, I don't understand this. Well, first of all, the problem is my name ain't Roy, okay, so that's probably right off the bat, okay. Let me get some stuff there. So, um, you know, it's getting a little more yellow and it's harder to see as, you know, it being crystal clear as I used to have it when I first got it, but you still can't beat ballistic gel. Okay, and if you'll see, as in, hopefully it shows in the video, um, I don't know what you're doing, but you better not be peeing on my furniture. Um, uh, the, first shot, blah, blah, blah. the first shot was the 185 grain, and you saw that went in. Uh, what did that go in? Hold that thought. Okay, I have my notes now for the ballistic gel. The first shot, and these shots were at um, 3,800 PSI. All right, so you can equate those numbers with the chart. Uh, the, first, the 185 went into 10 inches of gel, okay, as hopefully you'll see in the video. All right, the 220 grain went 12 inches in, and you can clearly see the bullets are separated, they're not hitting each other. And 255, which was my favorite, went 15 inches, almost through the entire block of gel. Uh, all three slugs, hollow points, mushroomed beautifully. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better job. And the only thing I see is, is now taking that out and testing it on a pig or a deer to see what that does. It's really phenomenal. I got a real kick out of it. Um, you know, I've been doing this for years. I'm getting better and better get the bullet design and knowing what works at what speeds. Um, so I think I am a professional. But you know, I think lots of things. Anyways, we'll do a close up here on the slugs. Alright, and I pulled them out and I've already got the pictures, you'll see those, but hopefully you'll see, you'll see these in detail. They really mushroom nice. And I just hope can't wait to pull these out of a you know a carcass. Let's do a close-up. Can we see this? There we go. Okay. So, to the left is the 185, then the 220 in the middle, and the 255 at the end. Look at that. I mean, that is really, really what my fingers look like. I mean, that's, that's sweet. That's sweet. That right there is phenomenal. Like, again, this is a fantastic gun, air rifle, I should say. Um, I think whoever picks these up are going to be really satisfied with them. Um, different strokes for different folks. So let's get back up to regular video. Okay. Um, so I hope you guys get a kick out of this. I liked it. Um, just keep keep your eyes on the web. 
uh, you'll be seeing, uh, there, I think there's going to be several different vendors selling this, um, sharing my information with the gun and how my hollow points work with it, and all of them are pretty darn good. But keep your eyes, like I said, keep my eyes peeled. I know on the different air guns forums, when they start being available, you'll see the prices, people start talking. Um, so you'll see the availability and who's selling and who do you do, do you customize things and stuff like that. That'll be, you know, a little bit later on. Um, but I think it's an excellent, you know, starting big bore air rifle. You know, you can't go, really can't go wrong with it. Um, other than, you know, hope to kill something very soon with this. Uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more quality videos from Roy. No, I'm not Roy. Thank you.